numbers right here. Let's go ahead and get started. Numbers 29 through 36, the directions say to evaluate the trig function of the quadrant angle if possible. Now remember, a quadrant angle is an angle that in which the terminal side lands right on one of the axes, okay? So 90 degrees is a quadrant angle, 180 is a quadrant angle, 270 is a quadrant angle, 360 is a quadrant angle, um, 450 go around once plus 90 more, 450 is a quadrant angle, okay? So all of these angles are quadrant angles. In this class, we are going to use our calculators to find quadrant angles. I'm not going to make you memorize. Some teachers do. I don't. I'm not going to make you memorize the quadrant angle trick functions, okay? So, here we go. Cosine of pi, that's the same thing as 180 degrees. If your calculator is in radians, use pi. If it's in degrees, use 180. So, the cosine of pi or 180 is negative 1. So, there's your answer very simply negative 1, easy enough. Cosine of 3 pi over 2, now if you convert 3 pi over 2 to degrees, you'll get 270. You should know how to do that, okay? So you should know whether or not your calculator is in degrees or radians, okay? Mine is in degrees, so I'm going to type in cosine of 270 <coughs> and get out 0. So the cosine of 270 is 0. Alright, moving on to number 31. Secant of pi, well pi is 108 degrees, and we do not have a secant button on our calculator. However, the inverse of secant is cosine, so I'm going to find the cosine of 108 degrees, or the cosine of pi. So the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So the cosine of 180 is negative 1, which we knew that already from this right here. Okay, now... Remember, secant and cosines are inverses of each other. So, if the cosine of 180 is negative 1, you then take this answer and, and flip it. And that will give the answer to the secant of 180. Well, one, negative 1 is the same thing as negative 1 over what? 1. If you flip that, you get 1 over negative 1. And 1 over negative 1 is the same thing as negative 1. So, in other words, when you take negative 1 and flip it to find the inverse, you get negative 1. Sorry. 
about that students had a son there that was yelling. Okay, here we go. So let's go back to this. Cotangent of 90. Cotangent's not in my calculator, so I'm going to use tangent. So the tangent of 90 is no solution or undefined. So the inverse of no solution or the inverse of undefined when dealing with trig functions is zero. Remember, we talked about that. Zero and undefined are inverses of each other. Okay, cosecant of pi. Well, that's the same thing as cosecant of 180. All right, cosecant is not on your calculator. So the inverse function of cosecant is sine. So instead of finding the cosecant of 180, I'm going to find the sine of 180. Okay, so the sine of 180 is zero. So if the sine of 180 is zero, take the inverse of zero, which is undefined, and the cosecant of 180 is undefined. Really pretty simple, okay? All right, here we go. Now, on numbers um, 37 through 48, looks like half of them are in radians and half of them are in degrees. So I'm going to do the first half in degrees, or in radians, and the second half in degrees. And by the way, if you want to do them all in degrees, like convert this over to degrees, which would be 120, then find your answer, which would be 60, and then convert it back to radians, which is pi over 3. I have no problem with that. But for me, when I teach this video, when I, when I go for homework, I really want you guys to get used to radians. So the first six problems, I'm going to do everything in radians. And the last six, I'll do everything in degrees, okay? So here we go. The directions say to find the reference angle and then sketch it. And then sketch the two angles in standard position. I'm going to do it all at once. I'm actually going to draw the sketch first. Excuse me for yawning. Sorry, I'm going to do the sketch first and then find the reference angle. Okay, my angle is 2 pi over 3. Now from here to here is 1 whole pi. 1 pi, okay? I'm going to 2 thirds. So I'm going to stop before I get there. So two th I'm just estimating. There we go, 2 thirds. All right. So this is theta equals 2 pi over 3. Now my reference angle is always the angle formed by the x-axis and the terminal side. So that angle right there, we're going to call that theta prime, the reference angle. Well, if I went from here to here's two-thirds of a pi, then I'm left over with here one-third of a pi. Or in other words, one-third of a pi is the same thing as pi over three. So from here to here's two pi over three. From here to here, this reference angle is pi over three. So the answer is pi over three. All right, number 38. Number 38, now 7 pi over 4 is the same thing as 1 and 3 fourths pi, okay? So from here to here is 1 whole pi. Continuing here is 1 and a half pi. Remember, guys, look at it like this. Every time you move 90, it's a half a pi. So there's a half. Here's another half. Here's another half. That's one and a half. Now we want to go, we've gone one and a half. And I'm trying to get to one and three fourths. So I have to go a fourth. So a fourth would be right in the middle, right here. Okay? So that's my angle. My reference angle would be the angle formed with the terminal side and the x-axis. Always draw your reference angle with the x-axis as one of the sides, not the y-axis, okay? So we know if I go here all the way around, that's 2 pi. But I didn't go 2 pi. I went 1 and 3 fourths, which leaves me with a fourth left over in here. So pi over 4 or 1 fourth pi. Pi over 4 would be your reference angle, okay? Pi over 4. All right, number 39. 5 pi over 6. Now remember, 1 movement from here to here, that's 1 whole pi. I didn't go quite 1 pi, I went 5 6. So I went here to here. Now that's 5 6 of a pi. Okay, that angle right there is 5 pi over 6. Okay, now the reference angle, of course, is going to be formed by the x axis and the terminal side. Okay. So if from here to here is 5 6 of a pi, then in here I'm left over with 1 6 of a pi, or in other words, pi over 6, pi over 6. So the reference angle would be pi over 6. All right, number 40, 9 pi over 4. Now remember, 
you can write this write this as an improper fraction or as a mixed number. So nine fourths is the same thing as two and one fourth. Four goes to the nine two times the one left over. So two and one fourth pi. So I'm rotating around two rotate two pi to the fourth more. I go around two pi to the fourth more. Okay. So there's my angle. So the reference angle is going to be the terminal side with the x-axis. So it's really easy. You're left over with one fourth or pi over four. I mean, think about it. You rotate it from here to here is two pi. You want two and a fourth, so you go a little bit here extra, which is one fourth. So this little extra angle right here is one fourth pi or pi over four. All right, number 42. Negative two pi over three. Okay, well now we're going backwards, which is good practice, okay? So negative two pi over three, rotate that around. That would be a complete negative one pi. We went two thirds, so we're gonna stop about right there. And there's negative two thirds. Now remember, from here to here is one complete pi, okay? I stopped at two thirds, so my reference angle, of course, is the x axis and the terminal side of my original angle. So, side. 
here is 135. So how much more do I have to go from here to here to give me 180? Well, that's going to be easy. 45 degrees. So the reference angle for 47 is 45 degrees. Remember, we talked about this a couple minutes ago. With reference angles, it doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. That's not the issue. The issue is, um, what is the actual reference angle? Whether it's, you know, the sign doesn't matter. Okay, I just need to know the reference angle. All right, number 48, um, negative 240. So I'm going to go negative 180 plus 60 more is 240. All right. So I went from here to here's 90. Here to here's 90. That's 180. 60 more gives me 240. Now, look, the angle I'm looking for, students, is the x-axis that's um, going to form an angle with the terminal side. So this angle right here is the one you want. So think about it. If from here to here is 240, okay? And we know from here to here is 180, okay? Then how much more do I have to go from 180 to 240. Well, it's going to be 60 more degrees. So from here to here is one. Um, is 180 plus 60 more would give you 240. So the reference angle is 60 degrees. Okay, guys. I hope this homework help video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate.